Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So if you're new to the channel, welcome to everything Vespa. That's all I do, Vespas and Piaggios. So here we have the 2024 Vespa Primavera S. And I'm going to go over all the new stuff. If you're wondering how they perform and how they ride, you can look at some of my prior videos on the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel. And I've covered the scooter every year and each of the incremental changes they made to the Primavera model over the last 10 years. So the Primavera in the last couple of years has come in a couple different flavors. This is the S version and the S is usually signified by having either like a gunmetal or a black trim. So here throughout they have black trim. It's a unique color. It's this new yellow color that hasn't been used on the Primavera. Uh, the leg shield trim is black all the way around or a very, very dark gray. I can see a little bit of flake in there. It does have some chrome accents like the fender guard. That does look different than the prior years of the fender guard for the Primavera. They even went as far as doing the reflectors in black, which I thought was pretty interesting. And that same kind of black gunmetal color carries into this new style wheel, new for 2024. Uh, they have some decals throughout the scooter on the back as well, I'll show you, that kind of are these quad colors. If you don't like them, they do remove. Just a standard affair front end, hasn't really had much change over the years. Been the same front end design since 2017 on the Primavera. The disc brake, 12 inch uh, wheels on these. The early ones did have 11 inch wheels. You can check out my next video. I'm gonna talk about all the differences of the Primavera and how it's progressed over the 10 years. Moving on to the back, the standard Primavera glove box. You could turn the key, open that right up. Has a new styled glove box. So they have these black kind of pads on the, the top because the top of line trim will have the keyless system on much like the GTS. You have the seat popper right there in the center. And on the left, there's a little pocket. Put your phone, there's also a USB charger and a manual release for the seat. So this compartment locks up. So whenever you have the key out, you can't get access to that compartment. Moving on to one of the biggest improvements is the dashboard. It's a carryover from the 2023 GTS. It has several of the functions that you find on the GTS, everything ranging from basic trip odometers to your miles per gallon, miles till empty, voltage, and so on. It even has engine temperature, which I found was pretty unique for an air-cooled scooter. It's not really necessary, but you know, there is a, a rare occasion where either the fan would become clogged or you're riding at extreme heat at high speed and you may want to know that the motor's uh, running a little bit hot. The older ones, all they would do is indicate the check engine light that lets you know it's overheating so you have no idea. The mirrors are a new style mirror. They actually went to the 10 millimeter threads which is a good thing. They're less likely to break off in the handlebars and that's a carryover from the, the 2023 Vespa GTS. Uh, they have the rib style grips, similar to the GTS now. The chrome covers are similar to what they've been using for several years on the Primavera. Moving on to the front, you got the LED headlight. The turn signals are the same old pod turn signals that they use for the Primavera and Sprint over the last years. That's for it to meet the standards in North America. Moving down the leg shield, you do have new design for the, the leg shield turn turn signals or running lights, they would be turn signals in all other markets other than North America. Fortunately, they included all the LED elements that turn these into turn signals. So look out for my future videos on how to modify your 2024 or later Primavera that include the integrated turn signals. Give it that nice stylish Euro look and eliminate these pods up front. Moving on to the Center of the scooter, they did update the mat. It says Vespa has got some little extra uh, style to it. Pretty much a similar floorboard. I know the part number is different for the floorboard, but I think it's how it interfaces with this new style glove box. The body, for the most part, is all the identical to the last 10 years of the Primavera. A pretty timeless, classic style for the quote-unquote small frame modern Vespa, as I like to call them. 
You have the newer style muffler. It's just slightly different looking. You can see it's got a catalytic converter up front. This engine design on this meets the new Euro 5 emission standards. Uh, they have an all new engine management system on this, very similar to what's found on the GTS. And a good thing is they do now have an OBD standard diagnostic interface because that was mandated in Europe. So if you're a do-it-yourself or and own the scooter 10 years down the road, you could probably diagnose some of the trouble codes that are in this because it's a standardized interface and not the proprietary Piaggio interface like prior years of the Primavera. So that's just a little side note. As a new buyer, that probably doesn't concern you because you just bring it to a dealer, do your first service, and it's got a warranty, a two-year warranty, like all Vespas do. Moving on to the seat, it's got a nice uh, texture to it, real fine kind of leatherette texture. I do like the two colors they have in the stitching. It's got both gray and this teal color, you know, similar to the decals on the side. Uh, same 12-inch wheel on the rear. It's got a drum brake, which is perfectly adequate for this size and style scooter. You have a new style taillight that looks pretty cool. It's kind of reminiscent of the new GTS. It's got that real distinct kind of almost neon style to it. It's all LED. The turn signals are just a typical pod affair that you find on Primaveras and Sprints here in North America. Uh, they have the red dead lenses. In Europe, these would be an, a clear lens with the LEDs in them. Uh, not for here, of course. There's ways to modify that. So under the seat, you have the electric actuator. That's only found on the 150s. You have the classic bucket that pulls out. The cool thing about the bucket found on the 2024 Primavera is it now is larger. And the reason being is the emissions control system is now better integrated into the body of the scooter. So they now have a full size bucket that will accommodate a full face helmet. Kind of a nice little touch. And looking under here, you could see the new um, integrated throttle body that manages all the engine running characteristics. Uh, there's some other small changes under here on the parts and there's the diagnostic connector. Moving on to the fuel. Uh, just about two gallons of capacity here. Pretty nice to have the new and improved instruments that tell you range to empty. That's much more useful than even a fuel gauge because it tells you how much you have remaining. The grab rail on this is kind of this nice new gunmetal color. There's also a new set of accessories that will also fit the prior models of the Primavera and Sprint, but they're new Piaggio accessories that were specific for the 2024 Primavera, and you'll find them on the Scooter West website. So the scooter comes with a standard center stand. You can find the optional side stand kit on the Scooter West website. Uh, the cool thing about it is it tells you when the side stand's down on the dash, because this gives you a lot more indications of the state of the scooter, so you're not in the unknown why the scooter doesn't start. Uh, motor's nice and quiet. All fuel injected, starts up nice and easy. You got the ABS brakes on the, the front of the scooter for safety. So as for the height, I'm uh, around 5'7". Real easy for me to the flat foot on both sides. If you're 5'4", it might be a little more difficult. I'd recommend before lowering the scooter, something like wear specific motorcycle riding boots that have a little bit thicker soles that would help you out. Um, the side stand also helps you with parking the scooter versus putting it up on the center stand. That works just like this. And you're wondering about the performance. They go about 65 miles an hour. Maybe squeeze a little bit more out of them. They are technically highway legal here in California, but probably not a recommended practice to be using this as a daily commuter on the highway. Uh, they're great for urban and suburban um, environments, nice and lightweight. You know, the whole package is well under 300 pounds with fuel and everything, so very easy to maneuver. Uh, being a little skinnier, narrower, they're just easier to get your foot down. Nice, lightweight scooter, but they still have enough weight to them and the extra passenger pegs to be used two up. So for the standard Primavera, it's just 
the standard Primavera that's similar carryover from 2023. Uh, the Primavera S includes the new dashboard and some other new styling elements. Uh, $58.99 is the MSRP. And so then, then the top trim of the Primavera and Sprint, because they do have a Sprint S and that's about $100 more than this. You're gonna have the trapezoid style headlight or the rectangular headlight. And the top of the line Primavera and Sprint is the SuperTech. And is what you get with that is you got the Bluetooth module. You can add it to this, so you have your phone that will interface with the scooter. Uh, the SuperTech is gonna have the full color LCD. It's gonna have the keyless system, very much like the GTS, the BV400, and MP3 530. So the last thing that's included with the standard Primavera and the Primavera S is they do have a keyless remote. It's got the bike finder that will flash your lights and you have the remote seat pop. Come in kind of handy before you get the scooter. Uh, the other way to do it is with the button. The lower end Primavera, such as the Primavera 50, you just use a key in the seat. They don't have any of the electronic actuators on it. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you're interested in the scooter and you're here in San Diego, you could check out our store here in San Diego, right across from the airport. If you already own the scooter, go to our mail order store, scooterwest.com, and we have all the accessories that your heart's desire that will fit this scooter in stock.